there has been this choice, whether consciously or subconsciously, to give God the Heisman. Pow! We, we live in this world that by its nature chooses not God. It happened with the first man, the first woman. It's happened in every man and every woman since. We've chosen, instead of worshiping God, to worship the things that he creates. Uh, for some in, in religions that worship idols and stuff, it, it comes in worshiping pieces of wood or ceramics or whatever those things are made of. But for most of us, it comes in worshiping uh, other people and choosing to give them the glory instead of God. It, for a predominant number of us, it comes in worshiping ourselves. I'm God. Nice to meet you. And, and we, we put ourselves in the position that God was only and ever meant to have in our lives. He, we, we, we push him off our throne and we say, I'll be, the, I'll be the God of this life. Thank you very much. And so in doing that, we have chosen to worship created things instead of our creator. Now, that, that, that makes a mess. Anytime we do this, anytime we give God the Heisman, anytime we say not God in our lives, the Bible defines that as sin. Sin is a, a Greek word, it's called hamartia, it means missing the mark. It's used in archery to, to, to describe what happens when you don't hit the bullseye. Lots of people are happy to hit the target, but God is a perfect God. Can everybody agree with that? And he wants us to hit the bullseye. None of us are capable of hitting the bullseye every time in life. Or can we all agree with that? Anybody in here sinned? Anybody in here not sinned? There it was, right there. How you doing? Okay. You raised your hand on that one, you lied, you sinned. All right, anyway, all right. Yeah, all of us have sinned. It says as much in Romans chapter 3, that all have sinned and, sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You've probably heard that in a church somewhere before. And that's the truth. And it's so, it's so hysterical to me, the way humans try to deal with sin. What, what we've all said is that we're not going to accept God's ideas or his definitions of how we should deal with sin. We're going to make up our own. The, the oldest one is the cover-up. Has anybody ever tried to cover up a sin? You ever try to hide something from someone that you've done wrong? You know why you did that? Because you've convinced your little, you know, little heads there that if I cover this thing up, it's, never, it's not really a sin. We think sins are only those things that we're caught doing. Do you know what I'm talking about? Because if I can hide this, it didn't really happen, and therefore it's not really a sin, and I can just keep going, right? But, you know, uh, that doesn't really work. Eventually you get caught for your sins. Has anybody experienced that? Ever tried to hide something that came out? <laughs> How would that go for you? You know, we're all like a little kid who goes, uh, like I was a little kid, four, five, six years old, uh, goes to the kitchen. His mom is making the only cookie, the chocolate chip cookie. All other cookies pale by comparison. Yeah, my mom was just stacking them high on the, on the uh, cooling rack, right? And you come in. Uh, it was about 4 o'clock. She was making them for dessert after, after dinner. And you say, Mom, Mom, cookies. i got to have a cookie. Give me a cookie. And what does Mom say? No, you're going to spoil your dinner. <laughs> That's what I want for dinner, Mom. <laughs> Give me the cookies. Keep the pot roast. So what do you do as a kid? Do you accept that and go back to your room and wait for dinner? Not if you were me. You, like, you snap into like you know, James Bond mode. You're going on a mission, Right? You're going to find you some cookies. And so you start kind of angling around the kitchen, <laughs> trying to talk to your mom, keep her distracted, right, until you get right in front of the cookie rack. And then, okay, here's the funny thing about sin. Tell me if this isn't true. Sin isn't satisfied with just one thing, is it? Sin wants more, more, more. And so you reach for the one cookie, and you're like, oh, that would be good, but two would be better. And all of a sudden, you're holding four in your little five-year-old hand, right? You can hardly hold them, but you're like, four cookies, this is going to be so good. And you're angling around the kitchen. Yeah, Mom, no, that sounds great. No, I'll, I'll definitely do better in school, you know, or whatever you're saying. Anything to distract her. But then moms have radar. It's just not fair, moms. It's like something trips in your head, and you're like, doo -doo 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 -doo. four cookies are missing. <laughs> and so you stop your kid, and you're like, did you take a cookie? And technically... No, I took four. <laughs> so you answer her, no. But she knows better. And you're standing there with these cookies behind your back, and she's like, Mark, what's in your hand? And you're like, nothing. The other hand. <laughs> nothing. 
except cookie shrapnel, all the chocolate chips melted on your hand, bozo. And then you're busted, cookie handed. And then the wrath comes and there's no cookies at all. Anybody ever, who lived that one out, right? But it all starts and stems from this man-made idea that we can just cover up sin somehow. You can't. How about this one? Another way to handle sin, spin. Anybody got a kid that as soon as they get in trouble turns into like the greatest politician ever known to mankind? <laughs> like I've walked in, yeah, mom, there's some mom over there pointing at her child right now. She's like, right here. I've walked in, and uh, it'll be in the aftermath of a, of a terrible disagreement with my children. This is back when they were younger. Uh, but something will have happened to where one of the boys will decide that they need to hit their sister in the head with Fisher-Price Castle. It's a big thing, right? And so whack, it's happened. She's got a huge wealth on the side of her head. And obviously, Dad has to come in and regulate. But I get in there, and I've, I ask the girl, I said, okay, what happened? He hit me in the head with the castle! You know, she's freaking out. And so you go to the son, and you say, son, did you do this? And he's like, well, yeah. And you're already kind of put off by his confidence. And you're like, why did, he, why did you do this? And he looks at you with a straight face, and he says, well, dad, I had to. And he goes on to explain to you why whatever she had done deserved her getting this castle on the side of the keister. Keister? Head. And you're sitting there as a father, and you're listening to him, and you're like, hey, yeah. I mean, he's spinning it so good, you're like, yeah, I agree with you. Hey, hand me the castle. I want to hit her too. <laughs> but then you snap out, and you're like, wait a minute. And then you punish accordingly. But, but that kid grows up to be an adult who sends his brains out, destroys his life, but sits there in the middle of the mire of his sin and just spins it every time. I need this drink. I've had a hard day. Oh, I need a drink in the morning to help me get through what I drank last night. Oh, you know what? My wife, she doesn't really love me anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and mess around with this other woman. I could cheat on my boss's taxes or on my boss's uh, you know take. I can take some from him because man, he takes so much from me. Oh, we rationalize sin until sin has us fully in its grips. Doesn't I mean? Isn't that, isn't that what we do? You know, another way we spin uh, sin is, is that we blame other people. Oh, I had a horrible child, you know, a child rearing. My parents dropped me when I was a child, and. That's why I've chosen this path in life, and I can't help it. <laughs> yeah, point the finger at everybody else except ourselves. Give all kinds of excuses and reasons why our sin is okay. These are our methods of dealing with sin. Cover it up, spin it. But you know what? Every once in a while, our conscience kicks in. Our conscience kicks in, and we're like, oh, maybe I should try to do better. And so... We do this, the third thing that mankind has kind of created in, in handling sin. We do the makeup. There's the cover up, the spin, and the makeup. And the makeup is this deal where we try to somehow balance out all the bad things that we've done with some good things that we do instead. And as long as I've done more good things and not as many bad things, as long as the bad things are higher in the air and there's more weight in the good thing part of the scale, then I'm okay. Uh, this stems, uh, by the way, from a very uh, you know, strong belief that I am God and I am somehow able to justify myself by my actions to the actual God. I mean, some people are, you know, with full faith, heading towards their eternity. They're going to die is what I mean. And they expect to stand in front of a perfect and holy God and say, hey, I was pretty good. And have that be enough. They're going to stand up there and say, I was much better than my neighbor. Do you remember him? Oh, wow. I'm sure he's not up here. Uh, they're going to say, you know what, I know I had a bad run from my like 20s and 30s there, but towards the end of my life, I started taking my kids back to church, and I went to Bay Life. That was a pretty good church, right? You like that one better than the other ones, right? <laughs> and they come up with this system whereby they somehow justify themselves. But here, listen, everybody listen to me on Easter. Everybody ready? Here's the truth about all those methods. Failure. 
None of them work. Every one of them is completely ineffective at dealing with the core root of sin. It's like that stain that you, you scrub on and scrub on and scrub on and scrub on and you look and it's not changed a bit. You don't have a cleanser at your disposal that will, that will get rid of the mark of sin on your life. You can't hide it. You can't explain it away. What the Bible says is that all of 